in God's name are you doing? Back off, you crazy bitch! Please give me huggy wuggies. Ooh. What the fuck are you saying? Pounces on you. How could this happen to me? Made my mistakes. Got nowhere to put. Var X3. What's this? A woo? Notices your bulge. <gasps> Let's have a little look to here. I wish I stayed home and played the new Call of Duty. This is so not cash money. Good morrow, Jadis and Lionel Man. It has been a while. Like, god damn! Where has this motherfucker been? Well, holidays, beginning of the year, and some personal situations that brought me to grow and feel happier. Somehow. But we ain't talking about my life. We're talking today about a genre of video games that I grew up with one of my closest friends since I was a kid. And to this day, he still beats my ass with some of them. But today, we talk about fighting games. Oof. Fighting games to me have been the staple of intensity in the gaming industry. A moment where one gets to shine with a learning curve that can be both intimidating, yet revealing once those scales start to grow from a constant exposure. Fighting game characters are meant to be flashy, involving, intensive, excessive, and they will have variety for anyone to have a main or a sub. While many go with those combo-loving rush down characters, others go with some strange technicians. Maybe you like the quirky characters because of their design, or maybe you love that weird one that nobody likes but it hits you somehow. Or maybe you choose the most annoying one, just to fill your jar with salt from other people's tears. While fighting games were not my favorite all the time, they have forged my perception in many observations of life in video games and of music. But with fighting games, aside from choosing the edgy characters or the mid-range controlling characters called tacticians, I tend to grow with a certain trope of fighters that there is no in-between for them. You either love them to death, or you hate them to the grave. You can throw a punch, you can throw a kick, and block it and be attacked again. But for these, that is but an entrance to a perfect counter. They are the Grapplers. I said, girl, let me try something new, please. Yeah. I get an ass at Gravity Squeeze. Gravity Squeeze. Gravity Squeeze. Gravity, 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 gravity Squeeze. Like you I was like, no. What's wrong with you? Unlike your regular brawlers or shotos, grapplers are a different breed of warriors on the battlefield of 1v1. The key to grappling involves three keys in order to control the field. Patience. The quality of any warrior that knows their ground and weaknesses to wait for the correct moment to strike when it matters the most. Condition. The mental torture that will puppeteer the victim into making mistakes, adapting them to the flow of the grappler themselves, and the unison of two very important for the fight, fear and respect combined into one. Which I like to call fear respect. Don't you fucking look at me, I am putting it in the urban dictionary right now! I laugh at you, puny human. Ha! See? A grappler might not have the flashiest combos or the best performance in a tournament, nor the greatest of control to approach, but whenever a grappler enters a field in a fighting game, it reminds me to those times on the mat where my bare feet would feel the field stretch upon sight and lock eyes with the opponent as once the shout is howl. The combat can start with a struggle, and you hold your opponent limb, knowing full well this is over before it started. Please don't break my arm. No. I am not the best grappler, far from it. 
But I love training on that manner, and to this day, I still love using that to distress my problems and my pains. And I am sure that is what means to be a grappler for these warriors. To struggle, to suffer, yet to be able to push through any punch adversity gives them and grab a hold of it in order to bring pain 10 times harder than the one they suffer. For grapplers, there is no fear. There is no yielding. It is all or nothing in a risky berserking combat that will take a toll on you, but the outcome will break the victim both physically and spiritually. And for that little monologue, we come back to yet another countdown, cause I have not done one of these in a while, and I would a fucking rant. God, I should not drink when I record. Ah, <sighs> but it's so fucking cool, like... Ah, it tastes so good. Join me, me mates, as we see graphs holes, locks, suplexes and throws that not even the gods would dream to witness in the battlefield of fighting games. As we see grab holes, locks, the 15 grapplers of fighting games. Let's do this son, video fucking games. I am not a great fan of the Melty Blood series, which has some of the flat-ass contradicting designs ever for their characters. Besides, North always beat the shit out of me in those games. Fuck you, North! You win this one, Matt. While for grapplers in Melty Blood, a lot of people choose this fucking blonde assaulter, which she is disgusting as a human being. I, I hate her so much. But as a true grappler that overcomes that blonde cum dumpster, I select Koma Kishima, the rainy moon. Koma grew up from a clan descendant of Oni, which are Japanese demonic beings that can be cruel and devastating, but also very humanized. Until the cicadas cry! <laughs> Love that anime. Koma is the latest descendant of this clan that was born with fire powers. These made him become secluded and feared even by his own clan. The demon descendants fear the kid. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Ooh, that's bad. Unlike his ancestors and his entire clan, while growing up, Koma learned to discipline himself with self-control and self-created martial combat that he uses the palms and arches of his legs in order to add pressure to his opponents along with taking a hold of their core of their body to exploit his fire abilities to the full Oni power. Koma's combat is similar to Tori to Karate, which is a grappling side of Karate that fights without using their fists and controls the flow of the movement of the opponent to submit them with grabbing the limbs or their core in order to strike at the ground. Both can use pressure and control in order to approach the opponent, but with a straining patience and comparable to Kata Karate. Now, Tori to Karate is more about using the limbs and core of the opponent, while Koma focuses more on using the core of the opponent and then limbs he strikes instead of grabbing them, which is a little bit more unconventional, but then again, he self-thought himself this martial arts, probably from observing other people that were around his culture. Karate and multiple of their subgenre styles, like Torite and Kata, are supposed to flow like water. But Koma's style of Torite Karate is like the falling of a rain. It is a downpour on his opponents with his heavy burst grabs and throws. I did admit that I actually had him low because Koma struggles in methods to approach to combat, but his style shows that a lot of expected honor from his opponent is within his sight, yet a brutal descending from his combos. He might not be wonderful or the strongest, but his methods of combat exploiting his demonic blood abilities show how strong of a man he is and how worthy he is of the leadership that he earned on the Kishima clan. <laughs> Tag Team fighting games are some of the flashiest yet intimidating tournament-like games to watch, and honestly it gives me so much pleasure to witness them to play them. One of my favorites being DBZ Fighters, which has one of the most iconic anime series ever represented in a fighting game, and has some of the most iconic fighters in the franchise, except Tapion. 
I, let me level with you, Arc System. Why one fucking Tapion? You have Janemba and fucking Cooler. We have had in Budokai Tenkaichi Tapion. Why the fuck do we have Cooler and not Tapion? Please, give me fucking Tapion or fuck me sideways with a cactus. EMOTIONAL <laughs> Nevertheless, for grapplers was a huge tie. I always got a huge fear to fight Android 16 online in matches, and Broly has been a dominant warrior against Rush characters like Frieza. But then, what if you get the brutality of a brawler like Broly and the precision of Android 16? <coughs> Super Broly is far more relentless than Broly from DBZ, and canonically more powerful. But I love how Broly DBS fights completely with an unfiltered combat that is similar to street fighting, something that is called mindless violence compared to actual combat art. And it is true, while DBZ Broly fights with the brutality and pressure of a brawler using grabs and throws, DBS Broly is one that fights with whatever he has in hand, since he has little to no professional training, he survived fighting monsters in an unrelenting planet and over pressure by his own father to become a warrior, when he has always hated combat. Always! A soft-hearted man that loves chocolate and would never harm a single creature that holds dear in his waist the pelt created by his first ever friendship in that harrowing planet, damaged by his own father. Yet the love he had for his father was so close that the death of that man made Broly become the unyielding force he is now, the legendary Super Saiyan. The way DBS Broly grabs and holds are just mindless. They are pure violence incarnate. But the thing is that, again, this is aggression that comes from sorrow, from pressure, from frustration. It's not like the Broly from DBZ that completely has everything in a certain brutality that is connected to his entire devotion. But Broly from DBS is just, it's just sad. His way of combat is completely bestial. It's like an animal trying to fight. It's a primal method of combat, which is not very far off. That is usually how some primates would actually combat. And it's not far off from the Saiyans. I mean, have you seen how those motherfuckers come fucking... You know what? Fuck it. Seriously, Broly from DBS is not a fighter that you want to actually underestimate in the middle of combat. And if he is tagged along, he will actually stomp on you. He will slam you down, and he will make sure that you are a fucking ragdoll under his belt. And I will admit I put him low because again, this is not professional grappling. It is just him being mindlessly violent, which I think he is a much better one than the other grapplers in the game. It's just the precision he has that actually makes me fear him. He is completely unfathomable. A warrior that not even the Super Saiyan gods can match up to. As the legendary Super Saiyan battles through the battlefield, slamming and stomping on his opponent's cows to break their balance and blocking and uses them like a fucking wet blanket. There is definitely no grace in his kind of combat, but it is so unfiltered and so unyielding that instead of brutal, it feels like the sorrowful desire of wanting to finish the fight as soon as possible. You feel the rage, not the rage of battle, but the rage towards the battle itself. And Broly in DBS is pure sorrow endowed with rage. When the crickets sing, the forest sleeps. When the howlings echo, the stars shine. When the rain falls, the land sheds its crown. When the metal stabs the holy ground, the lightning strikes. And when the land is enraged, the thunder shall roar. The Hinamatoon, Thunder, is a combatant unlike any other in Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct uses a lot of aggression and precision to your attacks, but it never uses complete cues for grappling because grapplers are also 
kind of non-existent. And then there's Thunder. Thunder is a tribe member of the Niimi Putim, where he remained as one of their closest members until his brother Eagle was struck down. In self-exile, Thunder lost to his grief and was seeking to find the remains of Eagle in order to give him a proper tribe burial. But entangled in Ultra Tech, who used Eagle's body and genetic code in order to create the Fulgur Cyber Warriors. Enraged beyond the capacity to die, Thunder, in his endless constant struggle to bring back his brother and to protect his tribe from Ultra Tech, he became the demigod of the tribe, the Thunder Guardian of the land. Thunder's fighting style uses tomahawks, with a combat style called Okichita to bring down his opponents to his range, to the ground, or juggle them to the air or sideways to control not the field, but his own spherical area. Okichita is very connected with using tomahawk or other forms of mid-range weapons in order to control the flow of battle of their opponent with short quick strikes that feel like a hook thrown by seven knees. It is pure blunt force, but at the speed of the flowing rain, which actually fits with the name. It uses the edges of their weapons in order to hold and bring down their opponents and also to change their position without them noticing, showing how even the smallest and weakest of warriors are able to bring down the armor-hulking monsters that would try to overthrow their own tribe. A Canadian tribal martial art that flows and strikes harder than any element of the land, it flows in a flashy strike and leaves the echo of their muscle and joints pained by the weapons, the thunder. Besides, fighting against rushed down characters that dominate the meta is not an easy task, but using both tomahawks in unison as if they were one single weapon shows the control Thunder has for his opponent. He holds one to their core, their limbs, he controls every single movement they do, and is able to strike back even when in the defensive side. He might not use his bare hands to grab a hold of their broken limbs, but those tomahawks will be the last thing those joints feel beneath the crime land of the Devil's Landing. Fun fact! Did you know? There is a Pokemon fighting game that uses both combat systems of Naruto Ninja Storm and Tekken. Yeah, Pokemon Tournament is fucking awesome. And for this entry, seen quite a few strange selections like fucking Machamp, who is a Chad, and Pika. Wait, wait. Pikachu is not a grappler. He is an all around. Uh, hold on, fucking. I need to check on this shit. Hold on. I. 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 Let me check this fucking script. Oh no, it's not Pikachu! He is not a he. It's a she. She is a grappler, Pikachu Libre. God, I cannot believe this is fucking existing. Yeah, they got away with making a Pikachu Libre a thing. Also, this is a female. So the male Pikachu, I guess, is your typical Ash Ketchum Pikachu. And now we got a fucking female wrestler inspired by Yoshi Wrestling, which is some of the most desensitized and brutal wrestling you could ever witness. They use their performance not just flashy, but in such a dramatic way that it makes you clench your butt cheeks in how they throw their victims and grab a hold of them while also doing their fucking dropkicks and chops. It feels like pure and adulterated violence. And this is women, Japanese women that kick ass beyond Wonder Woman's lasso. Pikachu Libri fights with the same kind of flashiness and disrespect. While her speed is not on to par with her male counterpart, Libri likes to use her electrical abilities to trap and enclose herself to her opponents with a symmetry not many can expect. And she is so fucking disrespectful. Precision is key to her combat style. Whenever she get a hold of you in the middle of a combo, she just makes sure that you regret not blocking properly or not attacking her properly. And she's such a fucking tiny motherfucker. Like, how? How is this bitch able to suplex the shit out of my champ, the Chad, the Giga Chad? I, I, I have no idea how this logic works. 
While all Pokémon have grabs in this game, they're usually for finishers. Her grabs are usually for combo continuations or starters. While her combo finishers are usually involving a lot of synergy with the ground and punishing the opponent when not defending themselves. While she can really struggle approaching her opponents, she is very capable of moving around with such a small fucking hitbox, and she always has traps and methods to come by. Oh yeah, I got no lore. I am so sorry, but... What fucking lore do you have for a masked Pikachu that suplexes a Mewtwo? Who who thought this was okay? Sakurai, do you have something to do with this? I like to spin around in fucking circles, and I still do. Even as a grown ass man. You know what? I am so f I am I am so fucking done. I'm done! I'm done! You can have that! I'm done! Spinning is truly my shit. You know how Nacho Libre is inspired by Frey Tormenta, a fucking Catholic orphan that became a wrestling priest in order to help the economy of his orphanage and grow a system to afford resources for the children in the years to come? Well, now give Nacho Libre the body of the Terminator and a bird head. Now that muzzly bird that you see right there, that is the embodiment of Tizak. Tizog has grown quite the curve. He was an orphan wrestler that over the years became such an unyielding combatant for the Tournament of the Wolves that not even the best of the best could handle him. So he was able to face opponents that not even Ezen Cave wanted to revive. I am so sorry, but Mark of the Wolves is such a forgotten memory to me. But I still remember how fondly those flashy combos this fucker had. The true potential is in the fact that suplex and corner throws are his bread and butter, along with some tackle riots. He uses his grabs in order to punish his opponent after approaching, something that would inspire in future games the same combat style for tackle approaching, with a grab and pressure, Lariats. Hi Broly! You can't best me, because the name is Dizog has to be a dominant force in the field, and even though his hulking body has problems approaching, he doesn't have problems with enduring and tanking. He is a chonky motherfucker that will use his opponent's confidence against them. Also not very high because of the fact that after retiring from wrestling, he became a very good lawyer in Mexico. That's like being an ice cream seller at fucking Sahara! Though when coming back to Team Mexico along with Ramon, he joined with a new mask as Dinosaur King, which still uses some of the burly moves of the mask of Tisog, but it is not the same flashiness and inspiring movement that the Scarlet Bird brought to the eyes of so many children. Tisog might not be back, but his elegance and legacy will always remain in the hearts of those who witness his godlike dexterity and skills in the Mark of the Wolves tournament. Nether Realms knows how to do their brutal fighting games, and Injustice with low expectations from me really got me surprised with my mains Lobo and Batman. Because, you know, I love Batman. I mean, how can you not main Batman? It's Batman! Stop it as you are. And fighting grapplers like Grundy and. Oh, oh, oh! Hold on! I know how to get this one introduced. This is awesome, awesome! Oh yeah, everyone's favorite backbreaker is back, and with a fucking spite unlike any other. While Bane is more of a brawler, his grabs and suplexes really hit the bone marrow of his opponents. While I have no necessity to introduce the story of Bane, in Injustice, this intellectuality gifted steric composed joins the Grot Society after being left by Luther, along with Salomon Grundy and their failed kerfuffle. 
He focuses his war crime political conflicts in order to ensure the sadistic follows of what society's main government fears can uphold, the public upbringing. Ben showers his thoughts in anarchy, and the worst part is he gets off on the side of it. He is both smart in the strategy and the battlefield. While he would look like a hulking brainless combatant like Grundy, his combat is very similar to both to Mexican wrestling from Rudos and also a bit of street fighting that would be compared to how Mexicans learn from the street. Now, the interesting thing is that his grabs and holes are more similar to Sambo, a Russian militarized martial art used in order to overthrow throw opponents with pure physical torture in the middle of combat, using pressure points and limb joints in order to uphold the most painful spots of the nerves and muscles. Bane and Injustice is a wrecking force that can overthrow the defense of his opponents. Raw power is nothing compared to him. He fights in a way that can overpower even power itself. While not as slow as your usual power fighters, he uses that in order to enclose and control the area surrounding him and making sure he uses his venom to crush his opponents, breaking both their bones and their spirits. Crush is what Bane embodies when it comes to fighting, and he is one of the ones to be feared even by the Batman himself. Rice indeed. What do you get when Japan gets inspired by the Hugo Boss nationalistic party officer suits and gives it a little bit of a steampunk mechanism and grab a fucking Buddhist gorilla and make it a fighter? What, is that too much? Well, all hail the... Interestingly enough, Potemkin, a new addition to the franchise of Guilty Gear, has become a top favorite among the community. I mean, he has a fucking poppy, how can you not? Potemkin is a fallen veteran that fail is an achievement in his own life. But as a failure, he embraces it. He, instead of using his life to reach true happiness with Nirvana and triumph, he enjoys to be the fool. He rejects Nirvana. He is the opposite of what a person seeking true enlightenment is. He truly enjoys being a failure in life, and he will make sure your nirvana is embraced before he fucking suplexes you to death. He's not chunk. He's not thick. He is big. Like, butt chunk is big. Potemkin is a monster that is literally a walking tank. Slow and steady but with a range and power that could destroy rushdown characters with only two fucking grabs. What is this power? That is so crazy! It is stupid! It is broken! That is bullshit blazing! Potemkin's attacks are definitely not inspired by any specific grapple arts, but the unison of multiple ones using both inspiration from New Japan Wrestling, Sambo, Kamathra, Ringen, and even Judo. But with those gigantic arms, he doesn't even need technicalities. It is all about getting up in your face and make sure that you smell his own fucking breath. And the last smell you have is your own blood before he gets a hold of you. And if you try to jump away, he will take that personally and just grab. Wanna rush towards him? Oh, you've chosen death. Wanna dash away? Oh, you've chosen death. Oh, you stand still with no options. Oh, you have chosen death. Then what the fuck do I do? Die. No flashiness, no grace. Potemkin is just a grappler that feels both painful yet quirky in his movement. He's a soft boy inside that cyborg armor, but with patience of an iron mountain. He can destroy with a lot of disrespect. And honestly, listening to Potemkin makes you want to uninstall Strive like it is the end of a League of Legends match. All hail the armor clad of faith that gives his back to society's happiness and embraces foolishness. While Potemkin is the chunk master of the fighting games, he was heavily inspired by another fighting game that was developed as a spiritual successor to Guilty Gear. When we had little to no Guilty Gear, all I can say is... Look what I can do! Oh, yo, yo, yo. 
Iron Tiger is the embodiment of what a grappler should inspire to be. He's a butt chungus of a bastard that uses his size to overpower range and defense with his grabs. Tiger was once a respected leader of a mercenary group that Agency 7 hired to retrieve Nirvana. Upon failure, Tiger came back with horrible mortal wounds that took almost all of the effort of Kokonoe in order to bring him back to stability, let alone to make him functional as a warrior. Well, imagine Robocop, but add some demon genes, steam, electricity, and magnetism, he got Iron Tiger, revived as one of the most feared and respected soldiers loyal to Kokono and Mercury. His combat is obviously heavily inspired by New Japan wrestling from different forms, but his combinations rely on his tactical changes of the elements of steam, magnetism, and electricity, which will affect how his victims will be juggled or broken out of their defense. Oh my god, it's... Magnus. How do they Nothing is out of reach of Tagger. Using his grabs and holes, he can throw or submit his opponent with a very painful and destructive forms of finishers. The hilarity is that for his side and speed, he's able to combine grabs like it's nobody's business. And if you want to escape, don't worry, he has no hurry, cause he will pull you back in for a world of pain. I mean, where do you think Pottenkin got his finisher? The beauty of his finishers is that they always end in such a flashy yet brutal strike. It's kind of like a wrestler asserting their dominance on the ring. Which fits where the inspiration came from. A Japanese wrestler is not just flashy with their combat, they are flashy with their personality. Even though Tager outside the battlefield is stoic and calm gentleman, yet in the battlefield he is fucking spark of fireworks. He is the robo-arm crimson demon that has the motorhead of the unrelenting force in his hands. Pray you can survive, because once he grab a hold of you, the meteorite that ended the dinosaurs will be child's game compared to his extra finisher. You know, many grapplers are inspired by wrestlers. It is about time we have one that is actually a wrestler, don't you think? Well, in fighting games, wrestlers are a dominating trope of grapplers, but why don't we talk about one that not only shows to be one of the most honorable, manliest, but the only one that was a politician that dominated the streets with a justice fist. Or rather, a justice pipe. Mike Hager is the only fucking mayor that would throw away the Powerpuff Girl's phone and grab a pie as he takes care of the violence in the streets on his own and still have time to have a beer. While in the canon of Street Fighter, he has always been used as a story character or a veteran of Street Fighter. It was the Marvel vs. Capcom series that brought him up to the final fight into the proper fighting game verse as he showed how his skills can even make some super warriors and abominations like Nemesis fear the power of the loving father with the skills of WrestleMania incarnate. Oh yeah, Mike Hager is heavily inspired by many classic wrestlers such as Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, and his direct base Macho Man. He's also an easter egg for Van Halen as a call out of their names, Michael Anthony and Sam Hager. Also his story is heavily inspired by Jean Valjean from Les Miserables, the man who became mayor. How the fuck does a musical inspire a burly man that will riot street gangs on the weekends? Nevertheless, the combat of Hager is no slouching. He's very versed in striking holes and even through his combat that is very similar to American classic wrestling. His heavier attacks appear to be inspired by Russian martial arts Sambo, which puts it in a way that he might have some history with such. Also, for some fucking reason, he always uses a pipe as a weapon, which is not far off since grapple military arts always use either a blunt or an edge mid-range or short-range weapon for both approach and for combinations of sweeping and defense breaking on their techniques. 
I swear, Hagar must have some military training because this motherfucker uses the environment as his weapon in such versatile ways and is still able to acclimate himself to the field like it is his backyard. If only Capcom could bring him to the Castro Street Fighter Cannon, then we could finally have the Hagar vs. Sangeef real battle since the old days of death battle brought it on. I still wonder, what the fuck happened to Boomstick's voice in that episode? These two wrestlers have never met in person, but their rivalry is legendary. From the wretched wastelands of cybernetic desolation comes a force that emerges from the future. Not too distant, a future where humans will rise fight and reach near extinction under the lead of one warrior that shall not be vanquished by the domination of humanity's creation. And from this comes their last hope, their only hope to save their leader or to lead their extinction. And now, Nether Realm shall be faced by a god-slain man, no, a machine. Get out. The Terminator in Mortal Kombat 11 is one if not the best grappler that the entire franchise has brought upon us. Not only because of his versatility and the overuse of super armor, but the Terminator, Arnie, is such a good tactical zoner that dominates both range and close combat. He may not be hyper fast and flashy, but if you have an annoying combatant that likes to spam, you can play the same game as them and force them to approach as you grab him with moves that are based from so many international military combats. Like hell, I'm not even gonna lie, I can only mention Sambo, Jiu Jitsu, Rinjan, Judo, Taka, and possibly a bit of Karma Thal. But the way he fights is more versatile and dirty. The Terminator is one of the closest embodiments of one of the most important clues to a grappler. Fear respect. Yeah, remember that fucking thing I mentioned earlier in the video? Fear and, and respect, respect combined into one. one. Which, Which I like to call fear respect. respect. Yeah, we're using it again. Yeah, it's a thing. I'm gonna make it a thing. Copyright it. The way to combine the attacks of the style you choose to fight with the Terminator are using both his weaponry and his hands in order to overpressure your opponent to make mistakes. Also, I love the fact that the styles are Uncle Bob. What the, what the fuck is Uncle Bob? Yeah, but what? He has to approach, but patiently. He has to annoy the victim, but with timing. He has to be precise, like an assassin. Which we all know the Terminator Unit T-800 is one of the most efficient fictional assassin creations that we have witnessed. And he shows it in the battlefield, making sure the Mortal Kombat cast feels both the pain and the fear not even the gods of the Netherrealm could even imagine existed. Do not underestimate humans, because their creations are what will overpower their own gods. And do not underestimate a machine that has become more human than the men you see as mere pawns. He is no savior, he is no hero. He is only here to terminate what once started. Come with him if you want to live. You know there is this European fantasy inspired fighting game that takes so many fucking inspirations for many of their characters, and with that, we have to make this quick. <sighs> you got this Frank Masson inspired organization, a royal member inspired by Count Ferdinand Ernst Gabriel from the Falstein Bohemian Dynasty, which also is where the note of Beethoven came from to create Falstein Sonata Opus 53, and with that we have to take the fucking strong arm ancient Falstein. <laughs> Hello, 
how have they made so much research to create characters in this game? Jesus Christ. Valstein is a void. An infected human now creature created by the EX influence with painful repercussions now making him into a longevo warrior that enjoys the thrill of battle compared to his loyal and calm Novaman self form from the Leech Kreis. So technically the Hulk with Wolverine. Jesus, that sounds fucking brutal. Volstein fights in an orthodox way that makes him his own grappler. What I mean by that is that his range is phenomenally long and he can have angles that would make any victim fear where they strength. Precision be damned. Coincidentally, Rinden is one of the most famed German grappling odds, which he does show to have been inspired by, but not too far off. It also shows that he uses a form of hybrid with Rinden mixed with Fetcher Bund, which is a fencing martial art in Germany, used for both short blades and one-handed swords. Volstein's combat might look reckless, but it is in a way that he curves his arms whenever he slashes at the same pattern as he was holding a short sword in Fetchabund. He creates a zone to force the opponent to make an opening, in which he grabs the shit out of them and just goes ape shit. I guess Ungabunga is activated, I don't know. It is interesting to me the proper way to use a combat inspired by how grappling should be used with a shorthanded weapon. But in this case, he turned it into a fucking expand dong method which upgraded beyond the understanding of the monkeys. Volstein is ruthless. He can be fought with a mindless combat, but you can see that his methods hold a reason behind it. It shows that maybe Volstein, after over a hundred years of combat, he might not be so beastly and mindless as he seems. He has a stability and a grace to his brutal grabs and slams and slashes. He is a true edge grappler. A sure minded respect, Lord Falstein. Originally, I would actually add from the Smash Bros. franchise grapplers that have shown their capacity to be dominant and effective fighters such as Donkey Kong and Ganondorf, which are both the faces of grappling in Smash. Even though everyone has grab combos, but these can combo out of grabs and keep their opponents subject to their zone like a true grappler, even after the neutral stage. But they are not on the list. Even if both of them are my mains currently, and they are so fucking chunky and strong, but what if I say to you, you could have the versatility of Mario and speed of Little Mac with a grappler, a grappler that dominated the top tier for years and still can show their capacities in tournaments. Just let me give you two syllables. <clears throat> Hoo ha! Falcon has a really terrible neck roll, um, and Diddy's down air hitboxes. Gone to zero, and wow, and ha ha, and a lot of things face him. He's Diddy Kong might look like a fucking shrug off, but his flexibility grabbing and maintaining the opponent trapped in a zone in are unmatched. Using his peanuts, bananas, and approaching command grabs, yes, the motherfucker can approach with a jumping command grab, and he's fucking good at it. The pressure that he can give in both the air and ground with such weak slaps makes one truly rage with salt. But the thing is, there is a reason for it. He is a fucking monkey. They are supposed to be annoying and throw their feces at you, but this is a game rated E, so... BANANAS! The common potential that Didi has is so versatile even to this day. People are using text and methods that are so shivering in tactics. They're fucking fear incarnate. Not even fucking Bayonetta's could possibly deal with this current domination the little Kong has had for three generations. Oh yeah, even though Diddy was not one of the best for Brawl, he was still a contender for one of the better characters to use in tournaments and in Project M subcategorized games. He fucking has movement and control unlike any grappler we have ever seen before. While grapplers in other fighting games dominated with their size and fear respect, Diddy uses those with an addition to impatience and annoyance. He uses his movement with grace and control, making sure their opponent commits raging mistakes and counters their attacks with his grabbing combos and even grabs them in the air for disrespectful moments. 
Beware the mini grappler that this day has no monkey business expanding dongs, but rather shrinking them to the salt voids of the Smash community. Now that we have been amazed by storm or grapplers that can destroy streets with a passion, how about the cyclone that brings the pride of his motherland, full fledged in red? Zangief has been one of the most dominant skeleton bases for grapplers in fighting games. He was one of the first and first grappler to become a dominating force to create a meta for the FGC and for decades to come. The Red Cyclone born in the USSR, he was raised with some professional military training and a lot of bear wrestling in the mountains. And not any kind of bear, grizzly bears. He then foretook the World Fighting Tournaments in order to show the entire planet the pride, the strength, and the capacity of the motherland with his skills. Which, the president of Russia would always compliment on his victories. I mean, motherfucker defeated Ken Masters without breaking a sweat and then went to Siberia to train just because he was sold to become better so he would become unstoppable, and that was a vacation for him. Zangief's combat style is very reminiscent of his concept Victor Zangief, who was a Soviet wrestler that joined New Japan in this WCW at some point, in which he used sambo techniques to mix with the flashy acrobatics of wrestling on both New Japan and America Wrestling, though his face is very similar to Dr. Death, so make that what you will. His fighting is very heavy and chunky for sure, but the damage input and demanding a button input is so disciplinary that yeah, you could get your ass handed to you if you play this character dumb. But Zangief is the embodiment of pure conditioning. He uses his movements in order to defensively approach his victim with a sense of pride and judgment, as if he was the entire army of bears waiting to maul you alive. His attacks are completely based off Zumbo, and New Japan wrestling from the wrestler I mentioned, and hilariously a bit of Mexican wrestling. It could make sense since New Japan has taken so many wrestlers from Mexico and to Mexico in order to train and become flashier and much better performers, though the Red Cyclone is not there to perform, he is here to bring the pain. His strikes are all made in order to approach in a very menacing way, closing his range in order to get into the core of the opponent and break their flow. Zangief is made to overcome obstacles, his aerial approach has so much more range than most rapplers, and he could even play with it since his moves can be cancelled at mid-combo in order to go for a grab. The thing is that he forces you to attack and go on the offensive, or to keep your distance, but if you do both, then the motherfucker will find a hole in your flow and strike like a boulder to your sick life. Projectiles? Pfft, what's that? Spam drop kicking? Please, I have grass for days! Grass for days, master? Grass for days. Zangief has a graceful combat in which he has to fight smart, patient, yet with a pressure in which, just walking, he already has dominance over the opponent with mental warfare, which is a key in Sambo. Remember how Hager had La Riots and Suplexes? The Red Cyclone has 10 times more power with his Red La Riots and Spine Breaking Suplexes, not even Bane could survive. Hey, maybe he can skydrop the ghost of Kiev. One thing that most people don't understand is that wrestling is just a performance, and when you use an actual combat then it becomes part of street fighting, it has no discipline unless it is implemented with a proper grappling base. Which yeah, for that you fight in the streets to learn way to uphold your opponent. It is where Karma Thrall became a dominant broken art in order to infuse pain in the middle of combat for you, not your victim, 
but you pray. And the reason I say this is because out of all of these grapplers, only one I can see effectively doing their best at both flashiness, few respect, and also exacting pain with a grace only a feline under the moon could. Under the infinite azure colored moon. <laughs> I have talked about Armor King and King in my past countdown, which, hey, give it a watch if you may, but out of a who, honestly, King surpasses him with grappling finesse. The current King is a Jaguar mask wearing fighter that was heavily inspired by Tiger Mask, a rejected concept art character from Capcom's first time making a roster for Street Fighter 2. And now, we have him as a favorite in the Tekken roster since the beginning. Hey, one man's garbage can be a legend's treasure. King is an orphan that grew up with the original King in the orphanatory protected by him. But after the death of one of the kids, the motherfucker overdosed in alcohol, possibly in more than alcohol. I don't know. And then the current king took the mantle under the wing of the old armor king, and then lost his mentor to an American wrestler, then forgave him. And for that, now the new armor king wants revenge, and king will now let him do such a violent act. Fucking telenovela! This Mexican street fighting wrestler has such a way of holding their opponent that he can start a combo with a grab, continue with another grab, pummel and break the shit out of your bones and joints, grab you again, and then have enough for a fucking slam or dunk just so he can grab you again. King has openings all the time. He is a risk at all fighter that goes with brutality that rivals the Mishimas. But the interesting thing is that his combos change based on the gender of the opponent. He has a code of honor, and he is willing to give respect to their opponent with dignity. He grew up in the streets to fight with many dirty grabs and holes that would be illegal and uncalling on any grapple martial art, but his way to uphold the control of the battle shows that he is both a brutal force and a gentleman. The other reason why he comes so high is because compared to the other fighting games, it's Tekken! Tekken is not an easy game to master, it requires a lot of precision and patience to control properly, and playing as a grappler in a game where everything can be countered or dominated, it shows that the challenge doesn't exist in the game, but rather the user. King Style forces you to play in a way that you must respect your opponent the same way they respect you, which is a key to grapple and sportsmanship. And once you find your opening, you have to fight letting your opponent think they got the opening first, and approach it with a brutal finesse, condition them slowly and steady, and make sure once you get a hold of them, it is well worth it. It is such a beautiful way of grappling that I could shed tears from seeing Lil Majin play. Maybe the lions are the kings of the jungle, but in the battlefield the roar of a jower is the sound of royalty to be praised in the ring. Mentions. While Ramon was a contender from King of Fighters, I did keep thinking of Vice, the fucked up female that uses her grafts like a temper tantrum by Paula Teenager in her days of the month, that was raised by a drunkard. She is brutal, but there is no proper martial art to connect to her, nor grace on the points to make her a grappler. Well, boo-hoo, I am so sorry your feelings are hurt. Killer Instinct would officially have two grapplers, but General Ram has more of a stabby grab combat style aside from his tanky moves, and that makes him more of a brawler than a grappler, so I'm sorry, General. Holy shit! Damn, you got ugly! Fuck you, man! It's the cocaine! At first glance in combat, Vixen has such speed and control of combat with her grabs that it is such a joy to witness in tournaments, but she lacks so much condition that her way of combat can be overpowered by other grapplers, but a good contender in current times for sure. 
I obviously did not forget about the second warrior of grappling compared to Zagief. While Hugo is seen like the other power force of grabs, Alex does have more of a military style of combat with wrestling which puts him as a brawler, and he does it very violently, which is something grapplers must have control of. Again, brawler, still a very nice contender. I'd like some boon kick! Nobody reminds me more of a grappler than Kanji. This motherfucker uses stuff that I love. Grappling, lightning, some disrespect, and a fucking chair. Foreshadowing. But the way of combat is not as controllable as the other grapplers. He was a contender lower than Koma, unfortunately. A load of yeah. Here comes a new challenger! This is gonna be unscripted, as in the editing of this, only two weeks ago, from the time of today, DNF Duel was released, and honestly, I have not played the game. Even though the grappler seems like it could definitely take off the spot of Koma, it actually lacks any, any way to actually approach, but he looks like your typical DND anime style grappler, which honestly, yeah, I think he would actually take Koma's place, but again, I have not played the game, so the rule will apply that only games that I have played. But I will admit, if I actually played the game, and from all the gameplay that I've seen, yes, he would actually take Koma's spot, no fucking doubt about it. He actually has approach, he actually knows how to actually grab from the air. Yeah, he likes to handle on zoners, but he has attacks that can actually overpower any kind of projectile with his super armor but the problem again remains he is very basic but nevertheless i think that actually overpowers coma's way of attacking even though it's more disciplined the grappler even though has no proper lore compared to coma he actually looks like one of those dnd characters again the monks in dnd have years upon years of discipline and history and most of them have certain religions to follow and it looks like the grappler could again this is based completely on Dungeon Fighter Online. So, the lore in Dungeon Fighter Online for every character is different. I have not played the brawlers in there, and I know the subclass turns into a grappler eventually. But, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say unscriptedly. And I'm just gonna keep it as an honorable mention and possibly number 16. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Sorry about that. Also, I'm sorry for the fucking procrastination. This video should have been released by April. And I'm here, sitting, drinking coffee, eating a fucking crumble cookie. I can't take it anymore! Holy shit, I have been procrastinating this and I could have finished it in one week. What the fuck have I been doing? Nevertheless, here you go. Enjoy number one. I chose number one for a main reason. While all of these grapplers could fight each other and possibly King would come on top, King would not lay a hand on this grappler, even now that he is not at his prime. He has defeated monsters greater than demons, and he can overcome a cast that is destined for greatness. And when he has no destiny, not a hero, not a beloved celebrity, not a respected warrior, yet he will always come on top when the echoes of the chanting public race to call for his name once more at the ring. One may be the king, but what is a king to a god? There's only room for one leader of this pack. That's Bale of Mastery right there. Bangle gets a hit when I see it, but it's not looking so hard right now. Oh wow, covered both angles, the anti-air assist. Welcome to the Aru! Train standing on the corner with 287 pounds of forged steel and sex appeal, the big bad wolf that will be your last and best hookup, the man, the legend, the ascendant god, the wolf, Beowulf. Beowulf is a washed up has been wrestler that spent the entire decade reminiscing on his glory days, wasting it on alcohol and drugs. Knowing fully well he was worthless, on his glory days, he overcame some of the most powerful and the undefeated creatures and superhuman warriors is in the ring, but finding out that one of his fighters he defeated was a fixed fight, 
inspire him to come back to the ring and reclaim his pride as a wrestler. And instead of an echo of Asian, once he overcame all adversity and even defeated the Skull Girl without being a destined female himself, he realized the only young core he needed was the one within himself. The crowd goes wild, indeed. When Belleville hits the ring, the stars and stage are set. His combat style has little to no loopholes. He's a middle heavy grappler, but seen as a tank because of his endurance. Again, wrestlers are supposed to endure a lot of damage. But the thing is, he might be chunky and almost 300 pounds, but this motherfucker has the speed not even Diddy Kong could catch up to. And we talking in a game where speed, precision, dominance, juggling, and directional control is so important for your mix-ups. And he can still outspeed the main character, he can outplay the ninja nympho nurse, and he can overpower the music cyber detective. This fucker is not made out of steel, he is the fucking Iron Maiden. He has a combination of approach dashes that attack with such aggressive pressure that force the opponent to go on a defensive mode. Condition. He can overcome defense with his grabs, which will force the opponent to jump away or try to attack, which he has a fucking chair, and the chair he has, it is for rage attacks or throw it in the air and change his attacks for less range but faster damage output. Patience! And he can grab both in the air and in the ground. Or if the opponent is grounded, what are drop kicks? Yeah, no. You think you can zone him out? Let him zigzag through the street and grab you from the air and fuck you up. Fear respect! And he will make sure to use the screens with invisible walls in order to break the fourth wall to jump around and make a joke out of your grabbing. To the point of outdoing the special effects of the game and even passing through the health bars. This fucker learned from Deadpool. But I am not done yet. The aggressive output he has is similar to Rushdown characters, but the control he has with grabs and suppression is very similar to how a zoner would play if they were in the close range. Bevel has keys to overcome any adversity. He embodies his story and the myth he is based from with a fucking T. But there is a reason why I put him in number one. You already know he would defeat King in a grapple match, but this isn't even his final form. Remember what I said in the beginning? Belvolf is not in his prime, he's washed up, sore, he let himself go, and he is rusty, and still he is able to overcome a roster of ungodly creatures and people who would make the Marvel vs. Capcom cast shiver and piss their pants. Now imagine if he was in his prime, fucking Shaggy would have to use 50% of his power in order to make it a fair fight. Is Belvolf the embodiment of a grappler? No, he is what the grapplers lack and aspire to be, the dominating force that can overcome their own flaws in adversity. He is what a grappler player aspires to become, the one that shall grab the controller, observe the opponent, and break the pixelated arm to just grab your character in order to make sure they touch the ground knowing fully well this is your moment. A grappler should aspire to echo their moves to the crowd as they go wild. A grappler should be precise, they should be secure, they must be in control, and most importantly, they must be honorable. One must overthrow their opponent and secure defeat, but one must never taint their victory as a grappler. One must be thankful, graceful, and firm. The mat is where one will let go of their limbs and core in order to let all of their problems wash away as the wind breaks through their skin. With every single swing, every step, and your sweat breezes around your core as you stare to the mist created by the strike you just blocked. And finally, you feel it, you embrace it, and you know it. It is your turn to shine, to let the crowd go vile. It's time! It's Beowulf time! Let's go baby, it's Mormon time!